Hello everyone, welcome to Demystifying Men with Rachel Davis. This is my part. This is me doing my part. And having these conversations, I can't make a man become a king, but I can have open and I can have courageous conversations with my beautiful ladies to say, hey, this is what he looks like. I'm excited to have you all here with me today as we kick off uh, this incredible show titled Demystifying Men. And so if you're tuning in right now, you may be saying to yourself, well, what exactly is Demystifying Men? Catchy title, right? I thought so too. <laughs> but basically, in a nutshell, what Demystifying Men is, is an opportunity for me to take the chance, to take the time, to share with you everything that I've learned over the past five plus years in regards to all of the information that I've studied. And guess what? Right. Men, <laughs> a topic that we all want to learn about if we're, if we're women, a topic that we all want to master. And it doesn't even matter if you're single or if you're in a relationship, having the basic fundamental knowledge about men will position us to be in a position of strength. We all like that, right? To be in power, not in a manipulative way, not in a destructive way, not in a way to tear down men, but in a way for you to learn what is it that they need from the primal perspective? What is it that they need from in, in terms of their most intrinsic and intimate and basic needs so that when we have that information, we can show up powerfully in a relationship and we can support the man that we desire to be with in a beautiful way that makes for a synergistic partnership. In addition to that, ladies, when you are in a position to know better, you do better. And when you do better, guess what? He has no choice but to level up and to meet you where you are. So I'm excited to share this opportunity with you. I'm excited to share this information with you in terms of how you too can demystify men. <laughs> so how do you feel? <laughs> that just tickles me. <laughs> All right. So like many of you, Majority of the information that I was seeking when I really wanted to learn more about men were around the basics, you know, sex, right? That's the biggest thing that you hear with regards to better, uh, with regards to having a better relationship with men. It's like the more sex, the merrier, right? Um, the other component you hear is learning how to better communicate with men or how to be more attractive to men or how to cook for your man, right? And to me, all of those things were basics. I mean, even when we think of it from a faith-based perspective, I know a lot of people in the church, a lot of people who are super grounded in their faith, but yet are still having challenges in their relationship. And so for me, when I started to really want to delve into the information around learning about men, I did not want to follow the traditional uh, gurus out there that, again, to me, spoke about the basics. You know, lots of great books have been written. A lot of people are teaching courses. A lot of people are even preaching information from the pulpit in terms of how to have a better relationship or how to best understand men. But again, to me, that was basic. There are other things that men require, just like there are other things that women require in order to have a, a beautiful, powerful, meaningful, exceptional, excited, passion-filled, loving, intimate, lifelong, fairy tale relationship. Because in essence, that's what we want. And so how do we find our groove? How do we find our rhythm? How do we find our niche? How are we able to be centered in ourselves? How are we able to literally just, just simmer in the essence of who we are in a manner that is attractive to men? Because that's all part of it as well. But what about the six inches in between his ears? And what about the primitive primal components of masculinity that hasn't changed in over 10,000 years? Studies have shown that the human brain hasn't changed in over 10,000 years. So a lot of what that Neanderthal man desires, you know, the ones that you saw when you clobbed you over the head with a club and grabbed you by your hair and dragged you, like, okay, ladies, we're not talking about that in 2021. However, there are primitive, intrinsic desires that haven't changed in men. And what I mean by that is understanding what they need in order to find you attractive, what they need in order to stay attracted to you, and what they need in order for them to be singularly focused to you.
And a lot of that has to do with, again, our primitive selves. So for instance, I'll give you a classic example. You're in a relationship with a guy, or let's say if you're watching this and you're married and you're saying to yourself, how is it that I can't get my husband or how is it that I can't get my boyfriend or my fiance or my partner to be more attentive to me? And the question for that can really be answered by, well, when are you asking for this attention? In case you weren't aware, men are singular focused. It's very difficult for them to multitask. If you ask him to watch, you know, to, to watch the children for you and to cook dinner and he wants to watch the game, I guarantee you the game is what he's going to watch and maybe the children second and you can forget about having dinner because that is because he's singularly focused. Where women, on the other hand, where we have this thing called a diffused awareness, which is what makes us really good at multitasking. And again, that goes back to an element of being of our primal nature in terms of hunters and gatherers. When the men were the hunters, in order for them to catch their prey, guess what they had to be? Focused, laser focused, to shoot the arrow, to shoot the spear in order to kill the prey to bring the meat home, to, to, to feed their family or to feed their, their village. Women who were the berries, again, you had to take care of the children, but you had a vast terrain, a vast plain where you can pick the berries from. But even in picking the berries, you still had to make sure that danger wasn't around. And so as a result of our hardwired concepts that predates most of, that predates man, so to speak, in terms of common knowledge that we have today, a lot of that still hasn't changed. And so when you think about demystifying men, we're gonna get down into the nitty gritty of that type of information. The stuff that's not regular, the stuff that's not you know, traditional, the stuff that most of these relationship gurus and coaches are talking about. We're gonna get into the fundamental things that you've never heard of before so that you can have the power to have the ideal relationship that you deserve. You don't sleep with three men at the same time, but you have three men court you at the same time. That does something to your value in terms of how you perceive yourself and how you carry yourself. And so when one person doesn't call you back, you've got two other gentlemen who's Becky buying for your time. And then so that's how you transition and you start to walk into your queendom because you are designed to be like women are designed to be served. Like most of you watching, I've had my heart broken. And I know I'm not the only one who's had their heart broken. You know, if you have a heart, if you have emotions, if you've ever been in love, um, at some point in time, whether you're still with that first love of your life or whether you've had to kiss a ton of toads to find your Prince Charming, or even if you're still kissing toads in an effort to find your Prince Charming, I'm sure you've had your heart broken. I know I have. And my quest for information was to make sure that I knew enough about men so that my heart would never get broken again. And that's information that you'll find and that you'll learn within Demystifying Men Show. You're gonna get information that will put you in a space where you are in control of how you perceive men because you know men better. And so I don't ever want a woman to not show up in a powerful way in a relationship because she's still holding on to past hurts, still holding on to past pain, still holding on to past heartache. And many of us were holding on to heartache and pain that we've received, that we've had to deal with, in addition to the heartache and pain that the women around us have had to deal with. I, for one, have been exposed from a very small child to heartache and pain that my, mom's, my mom has experienced. I've been exposed to heartache and pain that my mom experienced, my aunts have experienced, my grandmother experienced, in addition to the own personal heartache and trauma that I've experienced. And I don't want that to be the case for us because we can truly find love and we can truly find happiness and we can do so without all of the pain. Right. So you have a lot of men who have children but don't show up for their children in that way. They're not in their kid's life. And a lot of it can be as a result of just a, a lot of distension within the relationship between the mother and the father. You have instances where men do want to show up. They do want to be a part of their children's life. But there's just a lot of negative emotion and energy 
that's that's tied to the relationship with the mom that he feels makes it difficult for him to be in his son's life. So what I'm saying is when we think about biology, a man can have a child biologically, but doesn't mean that he's going to be a father. All right, so ladies, here's a secret, in case you didn't know it. Men go through, right? And men grow through an evolutionary process that it is key when you meet somebody to understand where they are in their evolutionary process. And so when we think about the evolution of men, um, and it, this all ties into demystifying men, men go through stages, you know? And when I have my talks, I talk about the night phase, and then we go into the early prince phase, and then we go into the mature prince, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, until we get to a king status. Right? First and foremost, ladies, it is, a man who has achieved king status, his sense of self is fully crystallized. Baked, stick a fork in him, he is done. His ideas, his concepts, his philosophies, his views on life are done. They're established. And the reason why is because he spent his entire life testing it for authenticity. So we talked a little bit about the primitive functionality, the primitive, um, persona that exists within all men and women too. We still have some intrinsic primitive traits that has not completely left us. Uh, but in parts of that, there are different um, personality types. There are different personas that exist within every man. And I expound on that in my book titled Demystifying Men, right? <laughs> Easy to remember, name of the show, name of the book. But in Demystifying Men, I talk about how Within every man, there's a lover. Within every man, there's a warrior. Within every man, there's a magician. Or if we put it in 2021 terms, an intellect. And also within every man, you have a king. And so for the warrior, this is the guy that, again, he is all about fighting for what he wants. He will take over. He will conquer. You are his conquest. You know what I mean? He is a fighter more so than anything. And this type of man may be, may have a challenge in showing you the more softer, intimate side that a lover would. And so when we talk about the lover in the book, this, the lover is one of my favorite archetypes because he is fundamentally sound and fundamentally grounded and fundamentally comfortable in his emotions. And not only is he comfortable in his emotions, ladies, he's comfortable in your emotions as well. And so when you have a man who leads with a lover persona, you know, all of your passionate needs are met. All of your emotional needs are met because he's grounded in that emotion. He's grounded in love. Everything about him is love. It's like the Don Juan DeMarco, right? Borderline could be a playboy, depending on whether or not he's, he's fully well-rounded and stable in his love archetype. However, you have the lover who most of us love and gravitates to, and we also have the warrior who most of us want and desire as far as having a strong man in our lives. Then we also have the magician, which is also the intellect. This is the, this is the cerebral aspect of the man. This is the guy who loves data. He loves analytics. He's the one that when you're driving in the car and you ask for directions, well, he won't ask for directions, right? You want him to ask for directions, but that's not something he would do. Because again, it's all about his cerebral. It's all about him being in his mind. It's all about data. It's all about information. Now, if he's well-rounded in the in that particular archetype, as far as being the magician is concerned, then he's, you know, he's a nerd. He's a geek, you know, and we love our geeks, the cute geeks, right? <laughs> However, if he's not well-rounded, if he's not fully grounded, he then can take that information and manipulate you with it. And last but not least, the final archetype we want is the king. Now, ladies, we're gonna dispel some myths about kings. I'm tired of women calling men kings who are not kings. Can I get a witness? And I'm tired of men expecting women to treat them like kings when they're nothing but a joker and a pauper. Every woman wants a king, right? We all want our kings, but 
And oftentimes we need to look at ourselves to see if we're ready for our king. So you're gonna learn a lot about that on the show as well. Um, and if you're in a relationship with a man who has king characteristics, king-like qualities, we're also gonna share with you how to keep your king. Because let's face it, there's not a whole lot of kings running around right now. So you're gonna get a lot of that information in the book and we're gonna tie all of that in the show Demystifying Men. So, Buckle up, ladies. You're in for a sensational ride. I appreciate I appreciated someone who was very confident, not necessarily arrogant, conceited, or stuck up, but someone who was very confident in their space, confident in who they were as a, as an individual, and didn't really care about anything else that was going on on the outside because they were very secure in who they were. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but a person having not having that was a turn off for me. And also someone who didn't really take care of themselves. You know, like I'm in, like I work out all the time and I'm not saying that people have to be in the gym all the time um, and work out, but someone who really took care of their health because um, it's a big thing when you're getting involved with someone from a, from a relationship standpoint, you know, things change. Um, people be, get sick and, and, and I've gone through my own health challenge. So I'm speaking from a personal perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, so for me personally, someone who, who really likes to take care of themselves or, or someone who didn't or doesn't like to take care of themselves was a big turn off for me. I know the show title is Demystifying Men, but ladies, we're going to do some work ourselves. The biggest issue that I have with women is we waste our time. And that is an issue I have above most concerns we have in relationships, right? Especially when it's something that we can personally control. You can't always control somebody being unfaithful. You can't control someone not showing up in a powerful way as far as being a provider is concerned. You can control your decision to choose to decide to be with that person. However, you can't necessarily control the person. If you're in a relationship, there's absolutely nothing you can do to control your partner. You can't control your, your husband. You can't control your boyfriend. You can't control any men. Even with your children, you're going to get to a point where your children are going to become their own adults and you can't control them either. The only person that you have control over is yourself. So one of the things that you're going to learn is how not to waste your time with the wrong guy. How many of you, myself included, felt as though you've wasted way too much time with the wrong person. You've invested time, you've invested years, you've invested money, you've invested, uh, you know what else you invested, right? <laughs> you've invested energy, you've invested a lot of yourself in the wrong person. And my philosophy, my thought process around that is, is there's absolutely no reason why you should ever have to do that. So what we're gonna do is unpack the reason why we waste so much time with the wrong guy, with the wrong person, with the wrong man. And that's gonna be a series and a topic that we're gonna talk about throughout the life cycle of this program. So I really need you to tune in every single week. I don't want you to miss an episode. You don't wanna miss a beat. You don't wanna skip a beat because what we're gonna do is give you valuable content and information, knowledge, know-how, so that you're not wasting your time, you're not wasting your energy, you're not wasting your pretty, and you're not gonna wake up 10, 20, 30 years down the road saying to yourself, I wish I, I, wish I did, or I shoulda, coulda, woulda. No, we're going to address those challenges that you're having, those mistakes that we so easily and effortlessly make, mistakes that we don't even realize we're making until after we've made them, we're gonna address those things on this show here. So you wanna always make sure that you tune in because you never know what you're gonna miss. And one of the things that I promise you that I will ensure that you receive is information so that you don't waste your precious time. That's a very powerful, powerful point and a very full question. And one that I think a lot of women are when you reach a certain stage in your life. There just aren't enough kings to go around, right? And to be honest with you, that is, that is the absolute truth. There just aren't enough kings to go around. Most men, most men in today, by today's, by today's means, in, our, in today's society, never get to king. They die princes. 
they die in the tunnel. They never get there. They never get to a place where they are fully they never get to their, a lot of men never get to the place where they actually reach their fullest beauty. They never get to their most beautiful self. It doesn't happen. And you're right, it's because the education isn't there. It's because the, the legacy of reaching back and helping to establish the framework by which a man should evolve into a king has been stripped away from us. And so it's not there. And a lot of men who think they are kings really aren't kings. They think they are. But when you think about royalty, when you think about the role of a king, when you sit back and you look at these movies that depicts what a king is supposed to be, a lot of men aren't there. They can't, even, they can't even make ends meet right now, let alone leaving a legacy behind. And that's why this conversation is important. Because once I learned that, I was like, there's nobody's talking about this. All of these relationship gurus and all of the individuals that are writing books and going all over the TV circuit and talking about how to think like a man and act like a woman, I'm not, no pun intended in regards to that, but they're not telling you how men need to become kings. So you may be asking yourself, is the show really for me? And my answer to you is a resounding yes. The show is for you. If you're single and you're interested in men, this show is for you. If you're in a relationship and you wanna know how to have a better relationship with your man, this show is for you. If you're in a relationship but you're not even sure you wanna be in this relationship, then yes, the show is for you. You may be a woman who's engaged to the love of your life. And you may be saying to yourself, well, I've already demystified my man. Why do I need to watch the show? Because you can further increase the demystification. <laughs> you can take where you are and 10X your relationship to realms that you never even thought possible simply by implementing some of the concepts that we're gonna share in the show. And if you're married and you're a newlywed, you're like, I'm blissfully happy. I'm married and I'm a newlywed. Is this show for me? And it, yes, it is a resounding yes, the show is for you. Because your husband is going to change. And guess what? At some point in time, the honeymoon phase is going to end. Trust me, I know. <laughs> and if you are in a relationship and if you are established in your relationship, yes, you do want to tune in as well because we're going to help take your relationship from being mundane, lackluster, typical, predictable, and boring, and add some seasoning and some spice to it. And if you're in a position where you are encroaching on a breakup, encroaching on a divorce, recently divorced, or have been divorced for a while, and you're like, I'm about sick of men, then this show is also for you because we're gonna go through all of the concepts, keys, we're gonna have guest speakers, interviewers, we're gonna talk about everything that you need in order to be able to have the life that you desire post-divorce. And we're gonna delve into all of that, utilizing what I share in my book, Demystifying Men. So yes, ladies, it doesn't matter where you are in your relationship. It doesn't matter if you have no relationship. Hell, it doesn't even matter if you don't have any interest in men right now <laughs> you definitely want to tune in because what i'm going to share with you what our guests are going to share what our experts are going to share the information that you're going to receive will be transformational and it will position you to be able to have the man that you desire so what is feminine energy in order for us to understand feminine energy we have to talk a little bit about masculine energy now when you think of masculine energy it is bold it's aggressive, it's in your face, um, it is present. You feel it, you see it, you know it, it's like, boom, I'm here. However, feminine energy, as, 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 as static and as concrete as masculine energy is, what makes women amazing is the fluidity the warmth, the compassion, the inviting, 
the nurturing, the, the, the receptiveness that we exude when we really function in a place of being completely, unapologetically authentic about being feminine. So ladies, come on this journey with me. I'm excited to have you here with me today. I want you to be here with me next week. And I want you to be here with me the following week. And I want you here with me the following week after that. Stay here, tune in, lock Tay Noir TV in, lock Demystifying Men with Rachel Davis in. I promise you, you're in for an amazing ride. See you soon. Mwah.